I'm Patrick Bailey with IQList.com. Today is May 26, 2019. And in this video, I'm gonna be fixing a broken LCD screen on my Prusa i3 Mark III 3D printer. Well, about two months ago, I had a, <laughs> an unfortunate turn of events. So uh, my Prusa broke, the LCD screen broke. Uh, it's not physically broken, but the connections are broken or something's fried inside. Now, I'll, I'll give a demonstration of what's going on. I'm getting all kinds of weird, um, Weird text on the screen, I'll show you. So I decided to replace it. So I ordered some parts, but I had really bad timing that this is also the time where you might notice if you've watched some of my other videos, I'm in a different room right now. So we are actually are in the process of preparing this house to sell. And so as a result of all that, I've had to spend the last two months working and fixing this house and doing repairs versus making videos. And so perfect timing. I broke my printer and I haven't had the time to fix it. So I've had been printerless for two months, which is not fun. Uh, but that's on me because I haven't had the time to go fix it. So bad timing. So with that, here's what happened. Basically, um, my Prusa was printing just fine. The LCD screen was fine. And all of a sudden it started getting a little goofy. So all of a sudden I had to reboot it a few times because I was getting, getting funny text. You could tell it was interacting just fine. So I could turn the knob and you could see that things were happening. But every so often I got funny text and it started getting more and more degraded. Um, then at one point, um, I shocked it. You know, I got a little zap from an uh, electrostatic shock from my hand. I don't know if that pushed over the edge. I'm not quite certain, but it got worse. And so I did get it to work, but I couldn't see the screen. So I was doing some guesswork. So it looks like I think it's all working. I just think the LCD screen is not getting good information. And so um, what I decided to do at first, and I'll put a link to this up in my show notes, there is supposedly a compatible LCD screen you can buy on Amazon for pretty cheap. However, it's not necessarily guaranteed, and also the cables are shorter. And I did buy it, and I was going to use it, but then I got a little nervous and said, eh, I don't like this idea. So I did go over onto Prusa and spent, you know, 50, almost $54 versus $12 to buy the official one, um, which, you know, I want to support Prusa. They're doing a good job. I like the fact that they're providing good repair materials. So I'm going to go with this one. I have both. I'll show them, but I'm going to go with this one, the official one, and replace the whole unit. Um, I think everything else is fine. I just think for some reason something got fried in there and I'm getting bad text out. So let me go show what's occurring and I'll go get to fixing it. Okay, so here's what's going on. I'm, I'm, I'm in a really degraded state. So I wish I could have shown before it wasn't so bad. But right now if I turn it on, it'll turn on just fine. But you can see, well, it went really quick. You can see it showed, try it again, it'll show original, original, and it looks like it starts messing up. So I think it's communicating with this in a sense just fine, but like one of the bits is getting flipped or something's not quite right. And so now that we're in there, I can start doing stuff and things are, I think are occurring. Oh, there we go, see 24 degrees, see. So the screen is, so some of that's getting through and some of it's not. So if I think, I think if I did it by memory and clicked it, and I did a little bit of that at one point where some of it was coming through, it would work successfully, but I think this just needs to be replaced. So that's the symptoms going on. I'll get this replaced. Um, and then here's the two things I ordered. Here's the cheap one that I'm not gonna use. Uh, and I think there's a couple of problems with it potentially that makes it difficult. One is these are short. You'll see these are really long as they should be. And also I wasn't quite sure, sure really is this the problem or are the cables the problem? I did swap the cables between each other to see if that would work but not sure, but just to be anal, I went and got the whole thing, but you can see way short on these. So if your problem isn't the cabling, this is not going to help you, you have to go order some longer cables. And then also, um, I don't know if I can show this, but someone was saying like, you know, these are unidirectional, they got a little tab on them. And I believe these are actually, at the end of the day, opposite somehow. So you have to shave, I believe you have to shave this down and flip, for this kind of, you have to shave this down and flip it up over, I think. Don't quote me on that, but if you go with this one, go do your research, because I think you have to do a few things to make sure it works fine. So with that, I'm going to take this off and then plug in the new one, make sure it's working before I reassemble it. So let me get to disassembling this guy. Okay, first I want to test and make sure this is working just fine. So I've unplugged it. And then what I'm going to do is down here, there's the two connectors, but you'll see this one has two lines on it, and this one has one line on it. Because otherwise the cables are exactly the same, they just want to make sure you line them up correctly, I mean you connect them correctly. And the new ones, see I got a two, and I got a one. 
Now what I'm going to try to do is avoid using the new ones because these are all routed just fine. And hopefully the cables are fine. Hopefully it's just this unit that has the problem. So I'm going to unplug them, but I know this, you can see, is going to line up like that, right? So the 2 is going to go on the top one. The 2 is going to go closer to the uh, micro SD card. So I'll unplug them. Put them over here. Oh, maybe I should have done that different. Okay, so we match them up. There's the 2. Plug it in. Plug it in. Set that on the side. Now let me get my power back in and flip it on and see if we are okay. Oh, look at that. Perfect, look at that. Click there. It looks fine, that's my problem. I just fried the board or something. Cool, so I just need to take this apart. So, uh, now, there could be a chance your cables are messed up. Now, if that's your situation, what I would do is use the new ones. And back here, here's where the cables connect. And you can see one of them, pull, it's got a board on a board, I'll pull that one. There's your two. So I could just pull these out. In fact, maybe I should just do that right now. So I'll take these, the new ones. There is a, there's two, just for my own tracking purposes, right? So there's a two, plug that in, pull the other one out, and plug the new one in. Let's see. Oh, and you gotta make sure, see that little nub? Little nub on that side, and that has to fit in the nubs. They're unidirectional, they only go, they only fit in one way. So plug that in. And then go to my go to my new one and the two goes on this side. And the one goes on this side. And then let me put the power in here and turn it on and we should be fine. Yep, we're fine. So that's a way to t put in the new cables. I'm going to leave the old ones in there because they're already routed just fine. I don't think it's a problem. But of course, I'll keep these just in case. But that's how you do that. So with that, let me go disassemble this to install this the full way. Okay, so let me get, get this apart. So first, pull these guys out. So that's free. And then I have to take this whole unit off. And this unit is held on by four bolts. One, two, three, and four. Get your Allen wrench out and take them off. There we go. There's a whole unit. Then I'm gonna take out the uh, thumb the. Uh, micro SD card and pop this guy off just so they're not going to be in my way as I take this apart. And then here there's two more bolts, one there and the second one there that need to come out. Which are a little squeaky. This is not held by anything else on this is just kind of wrapped around, so you just kind of have to snap it out a little bit. And then we have this whole piece. And this is held on by these, you just have to pull them off to the side. You can see that. Just gotta pull it off. So I'll set this like this. And I'll leave this like this so I can use it as my reference. Here's a new one. Get it lined up the same. Put this guy on. 
put this guy on. There we go. And then, let me see. So that's going to be attached like that. And that's going to, there we go. Put that hole over there. And I guess I probably should, I'm one of these people who always leave this on forever. But I'm going to risk it and I'm going to take it off. Otherwise it's on there for four years for no good reason. There's your protective coating. I'm going to live large now. Okay, so we get this. Put you in there. I have to probably scoot these a little bit. See, I'm not hitting there right there. I'm too far over. I gotta scoot that in a little bit. So it actually goes in. It goes in. Good. And then I've got, see these two guys, which are on the bottom. Get that one in. Oops. Get it snug. this up here. Oh, yeah, we got a... In case you don't know, if you've not assembled these, there's nuts back in here. You see these little square nuts? So make sure those are still in there, otherwise it's not going to grab onto them. Get one on down there and one on up here so I can align it. I'm not going to tighten them too much at first. with all these wires in the way. Okay, that one's on. That one's on. Just needs to be snug. And then get this last one in. There we go. Snug. 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 Good to go. And I've got two goes on top. In this orientation and the one goes on there. I should say the two goes closer to the micro SD card up here. So now we're all snapped in. I think we're good. Let me flip it up. Put my little turn knob back on here. Feels good. Micro SD card in. And I think I'm nearly done. And let me fire it up. And there we go. So now let me see if I can start preheating. Cool. There you go. So, oh, a little pain in the butt. But, well, that was, a, that was an easy fix. That was an easy fix. And I've been a little abusive to this, and I shocked it. So, you know, 50 bucks. I kind of figure I'm going to have to spend... In the current state of things, I have to probably spend probably $100, $200 in repairs a year on this thing if you're using it as much as I am. I'm using it six days a week, 20 hours a day, abusing it. So that's not bad for a good printer. I'm pretty happy, and now she's fixed. And hopefully this helps someone else out there whose LCD printer's broken too. Hey, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, hey, give it a thumbs down. Also, if you like what we're doing here, subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button. And lastly, have a piece of info to share? Just post a comment.